It's undeniable that 2020's COVID-19 pandemic has shaken the world with how fast it is spreading. Behind the rising numbers of patients and victims, medical forces are working day and night in the open to handle the situation. On the other hand, most of us are forced to stay behind closed doors to reduce infection. With no friends to keep company, our phones, laptops, television, and even the fridge become our best friends. But what if those friends of ours actually make it easier for us to get infected? Sometimes, the truth is scarier than fiction. It starts with the fact that our electronic friends keep on generating what is called an electromagnetic field. Electromagnetic fields are invisible interference in the space around us caused by the work of electrics. True to its name, it is made up of two parts, electric and magnetic versions of invisible waves, each with its own interaction and properties. Not only interference from electrics, X-rays, radio waves, and even light are electromagnetic waves. We've been so consistently exposed to it, why is it a problem now? Well, the thing is, electromagnetic fields come in many strengths based on their frequency or how frequent the waves that make it up travel. Recently, a study made by French researcher Vincent Lauer found that these electromagnetic fields at extremely low frequencies, or ELF EMFs, drastically impair our body's ability to form functioning white blood cells. If you didn't know, white blood cells act as our body's army against diseases and viruses, and reduced numbers would make us vulnerable to infection or creating what is called a protection gap. This effect becomes more dangerous in our situation right now, since being just a little bit more vulnerable can increase your chances of getting infected drastically or for the virus to kill faster. To make matters worse, the ELF EMFs are produced by every single appliance that uses wall-plugged electricity, which means that we are always going to be exposed if we stay close to them. We're all going to be affected by this, but the biggest victims of this unexpected effect will be those in the medical environment. Electrical devices are undeniably needed for patient treatment and monitoring, and because they need to be close to the patient and the doctors to be useful, both the healer and the sick will be affected. The ELF EMFs will weaken the immunity of the patients, making them harder to recover. Worse, it will lower the immune strength of the medical forces, making them more prone to infection. When the medical forces get sick, they're not allowed to treat the COVID-19 patients. If there are less and less forces, who will handle the endless flow of patients? It is important to understand that we would not know this threat hiding in plain sight if not for physics. But physics doesn't only help us understand, but it also gives way for a saving grace. Enter electromagnetic shielding. Remember how the electromagnetic field is made up of electric and magnetic fields? Well, conductors like metals have a way of eliminating both parts of the field, effectively removing it entirely or shielding us from it. How the conductor eliminates both parts is complex, but think of it as doing two things at once, becoming a vacuum cleaner that absorbs the magnetic field and also a mirror that makes an opposite version of the electric field that neutralizes the original. Electromagnetic shielding has been able to block strong fields coming from large-scale manufacturing and power plants around the world, so who's to say it can't be used on a smaller scale to protect our doctors and patients of this pandemic? To counter the ELF EMFs produced by the electrical appliances affecting the patients and medics, we have an idea that I've just might idea. work. As mentioned before, the conductor acting as the shield needs to be able to be a magnetic field vacuum cleaner and an electric field mirror shield. That depends on the magnetic permeability of the conductor, or how good it is at sucking magnetic fields in, and the inductivity of the conductor, or how good it is at reflecting evil version of the electric fields. Instead of using a material that can do both pretty well, why not use two that can do each job exceptionally well? When it comes to permeability, permalloy, a mixture of nickel and iron is a winner for this. For inductivity, aluminium can do this pretty well while not being magnetic so that it doesn't interfere with the job of the vacuum cleaner. Both aren't heavy on the cost department either. Putting both together, we reach a design that can be implemented in isolation rooms. Why does it look like this, you may ask? Well, the two conductors should be separated since they can interact negatively if they come in direct contact, so a rubber insulation is put around them as the brace. The rubber insulation also becomes shaped like a dish to stop any fields that may come from stray reflections. Lastly, putting sections of the conductors in separated layers help ensure that no field is left uneliminated. 
White blood cells or lymphocytes are mostly produced in glands around the head and neck, so a good amount of shielding should be placed near there. This bracer-shaped shield can be placed on the handles of the medical bed, making it located perfectly to protect our patients. Larger, similarly shaped shields can be placed just close to the electrical appliances so our medical forces get a good dose of protection. Should this be implemented, we will be able to protect our frontline fighters and our fallen warriors from a threat that they might never knew had existed. We would not be able to understand this threat hiding in plain sight if not for physics. But physics doesn't only help us understand, it also gives way for a saving grace. So when somebody says the weapon to fight a pandemic only lies in biology, you go tell them that they are dead wrong.